But I'm happy to be here today with you. Thank you for this opportunity. Pastor Robles Jr., thank you for, for the confidence. Uh, he's, a, he's a friend, uh, a brother that we grew up with. His church is uh, a childhood church. I was just, I'm here with my son today, Michael. Um, so I want to thank you for joining me today, Michael. But I want to get into God's word. I'm, I'm excited about what I see God doing here in this house. Um, you know, and, and I, I believe that as, uh, as God is preparing, you know, and God is molding, and God is shaping, God's glory is also about to pour out. And uh, that testimony of, of, of how God provides, and he doesn't always do it the way we like, right? You know, we plan and God laughs. We prepare, you know, you're called to leadership, you're called to preparation. But I want to get into his word today. Because um, I feel like I'm about to give birth. This has been brewing in my spirit for some time. And I want to share it with you. And I want to go to the book of Exodus, chapter 40. In verse 36, um, I want to send you greetings on behalf of our church in um, East New York, Brooklyn. The church is uh, Ark of Salvation in East New York. We're at 2439 Pitkin Avenue. It's a growing church, a church that's filled with the power of God, and people are being saved, convicted. Last week, you know, we we don't have a parking lot, so our our front uh, sidewalk that is our parking lot. The doors are open, and as I was ministering last week, these two ladies passed by, and, and I just extended a greeting to them, and they waved back, and they came in, and one of them left with Jesus Christ in their heart. It's amazing what God is doing, right? And I believe the same thing is happening here. There's just a, the spirit of God's glory in this house. And if you're sick, God is going to heal you. If you're feeling depressed and you're feeling down and discouraged, God is going to lift you up. Because that's the God that we serve. The God that we serve is powerful in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 40, verse 36 and 37. The word of the Lord reads in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud, say with me, cloud, was taken up from over the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set out. The cloud was not taken up, or the cloud would not move. Then they would not set out until the day when it was taken up. I'm going to go into Exodus 13 and 21. It says, The Lord was going before them in a pillar of fire, a pillar of cloud by day, to a pillar of fire by night, to give them light that they might travel by day and by night, them on the way and in. Exodus 33, 14 and 15. Moses declares this word. And he said, if your presence does not go with me, we will not move. Father, we thank you. We bless and honor your name. We glorify you. So grateful, Lord, for all that you are doing here at Prince of Peace English Ministry, my God. Thank you for the senior pastor, Pastor Robles, Pastor Robles Jr., and their team of servants, my God. I ask you to bless them, Lord. Bless this word, Father God. Use me as a vessel. Father God, or an instrument for your glory, my God, today. In, the Jesus, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Alejandra said, my name is um, Pastor Abraham Garcia. Um, I was born and raised here in the Rockaways. Um, I think the Rockaways is a, is, a, is a really hidden secret. It's a special place. And we're seeing what God is doing in the midst of, of our neighborhood, of this neighborhood here. Um, there's so much development. There's so much opportunity. There's so many great things that are happening in the midst of it. And uh, I believe that this church is just preparing for what God is about to bring. And you're, you're part of that. And if you're part of that, I, I believe you should give yourself a hand of applause and give the Lord glory for what he's about to do. Say, thank you, Lord, because I'm part of what you're going to do. We see that they're the people of Israel coming out of Egypt. 
they find themselves in the wilderness. They find themselves in the desert. And Moses is leading them. Moses already had his desert experience. After 40 years, Moses comes back to Egypt because God speaks to him. Just like God spoke to uh, Edwin Robles Jr. said, I need you to go back to your home, to the place where I took you from. And God continues, takes us out and prepares us. And he molds us and he shapes us through life's deserts, through, through life's storms, through, through life's uh, instances. There's so many things that life brings through you, to, uh, to you, uh, if, how life can form you in the midst of storms, in the midst of trials, in, in the midst of uh, battles, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of so many things, in the, man, in the midst of abandonment. God prepares you. And then he tells you, I need you to go back to the very place where I began. The very place where you were raised. The very place where you were trained. The very place where you were instructed. The very place where I had walked with you and talked with you and I showed you. I need you to go back. And sometimes people think that going back is a negative thing. But I got to tell you in the Lord, coming back is not negative. Coming back is not negative. Many years ago as a little boy, I was standing here right in these pews and sleeping underneath the benches. I, I always share the story because I can't believe I, I fit under those things. But sometimes God says, I need you to go back because I have a word for my people. After traveling so many places and seeing God move in so many places, now God is using the same instrument that he raised up in a place to bring a word to a place, to bring a word to a people, to bring a word to a house. And I want to encourage you today that don't be afraid of going back because God placed a word in you to encourage others. Moses goes back to to uh, Egypt because God told him I need you to go back and tell Pharaoh to let my people go Moses obediently returns back and he speaks to him and there's some there's some challenges there's some resistance but eventually Pharaoh had to let go there's some people that are still in your past that are in bondage they're they're enslaved and God wants to use you to go and help them out to go and extend the hand and tell them you know you're better than that God has more for you. But in the midst of this, God calls Moses and he takes the people out of Egypt and they start walking in their desert experience. The Bible says that as they walked in the desert, they, you know, they would set up a tent, a tabernacle, a place of worship. And it says as the cloud moved, then the people of God would move. But when the cloud was still, the people of God were still. And I came here to share this with you. That the cloud of glory is over this house. The cloud of glory is leading this house. And Moses uh, begins to lead his people. And Pharaoh, infuriated, starts to chase them. And it leads them to the, to the Red Sea. And, and they're there waiting. But there was the cloud. Every time the cloud would raise up and move, they would move. But when the cloud was still, they were still. And it says that the cloud by day was their guide. And I want to talk to you about the difference between guiding and leading. It's pretty much the same. But the Spirit of the Lord wanted me to share this with you. The guide is what covers you, walks over you during the day. But what leads them, what was leading them was the light, the pillar of fire, which represents the Holy Spirit. The cloud of glory that was leading them. We know it as the glory of God. We also know it in the scriptures as the Shekinah glory, which is the, uh, the, the, the evidence of God himself in the cloud. And that same cloud that, that led the people of Israel in the desert. It's the same cloud, I believe, that's leading uh, Prince of Peace English ministry. Hallelujah. Something that has been birthed. Something that has been brought from a, a man that had to come back. Because there was something that was still needed for what is coming here to Far Rockaway. 
for all those buildings and all that preparation that's, that's being done, there needs a church to be prepared to receive them. Praise the living God. There is a cloud that is leading you. Pastor Robles Jr. is not doing this on his own. I could promise you that. Pastor Senior uh, Robles is not doing this on his own. He's a man of God. These are men that have been trained in the desert. They've been trained. They've been developed. Right? They, the, a test of time has proven. And I'm, I'm really glad that I had to escape for a moment. Because exactly what Alexander was talking about is a word that God has for this house. On several occasions in the Bible, it speaks about the cloud. And this cloud is a cloud of glory. And as a matter of fact, it says that Jesus... When he returns, he's going to return on the cloud. The power, the authority, the anointing is on the cloud. Moses uh, finds himself when he's writing the tablets. There's a cloud that falls over Mount Moriah, Shekinah glory, of Mount Sinai. As he's speaking with God, God's presence was so great couldn't see him direct just like we can't see the sun direct it's too strong but when the cloud comes we're able to see the burning bush also God was manifesting Shekinah glory God is going to show his glory here in this house because you're being led by the cloud you're being led by God's presence. And listen to this. The cloud during the day was to cover them from the elements of the desert. The cloud that is covering this church is to protect you and cover you from the elements of life. From the elements of, of disaster. From the elements of the world that we're living in today. From the elements of sin. From the elements, right, of, of iniquity. From the elements of, of, of people not being faithful. From the elements of, of, of the world today that we see so many things happening. The good they call bad and the bad they call good. You know, when anything goes wrong, the leadership gets in, is, is the blame. for people's lack of walking in the cloud. Interesting about a guide talked about the guide and the lead the guide you need to walk in and follow where the guide tells you you ever have somebody trying to follow you tell them follow me I know where I'm going they don't know where they're going but meanwhile they want to go in front of you they don't have no experience they have no preparation but meanwhile they want to tell you what to do it's important to be guided church it's important to let yourself be led and guided by this cloud of glory. Because if you step outside of it, that's when the danger comes. If you step ahead of it, that's when danger comes. If you fall behind it, that's when danger comes. When God says move, then you move. When God says be still, then you need to be still. But I promise you that God is leading you to a latter glory. God is leading this house to something that never has been experienced here before. Last week, I was speaking to our church, and I was talking to them about the a Nehemiah project that we're working on at the local church, but I was talking to them that um, there was uh, Ezra, uh, Zerubbabel, and, uh, and Haggai. You know, they were contemporary prophets, and they were talking about the latter glory because people were like man remember how this church used to be and, and remember how amazing it was and it was so much bigger than and it was the, the platform but then because of disobedience because they walked away from the cloud because they separated themselves from the glory of God because they disobeyed the the the, the authority and the, and the calling that God had for them and and the instruction that God had given them they they stepped away from it and then they suffered the consequences and the temple suffered comes Zerubbabel and said, we got to get these people together. The temple is shambles. It's not the same what it used to be. It's former glory. And, 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 and these other prophets sharing about how, you know, no, no, let's do it this way. And they all had great ideas. But the challenge was not the temple. 
The issue was not the temple. The issue was the hearts of the people. And sometimes we're looking for bigger, better, grander, more, more lights, more floods, more, more this, more that. None of that will matter if the cloud doesn't go with you. If God's presence doesn't lead, we're not going anywhere. No matter how much we prepare, no matter how much we equip, if God's glory, hallelujah, does not lead the future of this house, or if this house does not walk according to, to, to the cloud of glory, you will never experience. There's still mentalities and there's still people that are enslaved out there. They need to see the glory in this house. They need to see there's something happening in Prince of Peace. There's something moving there that this supernatural that I, I've never experienced before. The cloud and the manifestation of God's glory didn't happen when they were enslaved in Egypt. But it happened in the desert. And sometimes you say, why am I going through this? Well, why, why? Like Alexandria was just saying, you know, she had a plan. People of Israel had a plan. They didn't expect to be enslaved in Egypt. They got so used to being in slavery that they thought it was okay. So now when they get pulled out of the comfort of slavery, because sometimes we can become comfortable in slavery. And God doesn't want you to become comfortable in slavery. God doesn't want you to be comfortable in sickness. God doesn't want you to be comfortable with the negative environment that you live in. God wants you to be led by his cloud. Even if you're in the desert, God's glory will follow you. God's glory and his mercy took them out of slavery in Egypt. But his glory walked with them in the desert. And during the day he guided them, the glory of God, the presence of God. But at night, the light, the pillar of fire led them. Which fire represents the Holy Spirit. Glory God is over this house. But the Holy Spirit will lead you. He will give you the ideas. He will give you the strategies. He will give you the outreach. He, he will give you the words. He, he will give you the format. He will give you, hallelujah, an opportunity to be able to reach what is lost. And it starts right here. Because his glory cloud is leading Prince of Peace. And I see a cloud. The cloud represents God's glory. The Shekinah represents uh, God's divine glory. And the Hebrew Bible talks about the Shekinah glory, which was the divine presence of God himself. It wasn't an emotion. It was God's divine glory. Man, I'm so thankful to know that God's divine glory is leading you. I'm so thankful to know that it's not by man's ideas and, and, you know, I thought about this and I thought about that. But if God is not leading us, we're not going anywhere. But you are being led by God's divine glory. You're being led by his Holy Spirit. This cloud of glory was guiding and leading the people of Israel in the desert. A tour guide. One that leads you, gives you instruction on the way. It's a sample, a manual. We have our manual. We have a powerful manual that leads us in the crowd, cloud and instructs us, instructs us in the cloud. The cloud was a, 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 an indicator, a guide when to move and when not to move. This guide, you know, you ever, you ever have to fix a... a you get a brand new door. You have to install a door handle. It has no hole. There's an instrument that they sell. You put it over the door and it's a guide. It guides you where to cut. So the door handle will fit. So that you can enter, come out. 
And that cloud of day was a guide to them. They couldn't go before that cloud. And they should not stay behind the cloud. Because God is doing something great. And I want to tell you, Prince of Peace Church, the cloud is moving. Don't stay where you were. The cloud is moving. The cloud is moving. The cloud of glory is moving. He's moving on your behalf. And when the cloud of glory is moving on your behalf, and he's taking you from glory to glory, and he's taking you from, from place to place, it's because he wants you to move forward. Don't get stuck in the past. Don't keep uh, reminiscing about what happened yesterday was great, but tomorrow's glory is greater. The things that happened yesterday are great. Thank God for the, the blessing of yesterday. I'm, for some, I'm glad yesterday's over because yesterday's trials, I didn't think I was going to make it through. But his glory led you. His cloud led you. And you're still here today. A leader goes before you. He leads you and he trains you. He leads by example. We have leaders here that are leading by example. That are being led by God. That are being moved by God. That are being instructed by God. The pillar of light, the example that we should uh, be in the desert. Even in the desert. Even in the desert, you can still be a light. Sometimes we think the desert is for us to die. And it is for those that don't have a cloud. It is for those that have no direction. It is for those that don't have no instruction. It is for those that have uh, no, no relationship. The greatest relationships happen in the desert. The tabernacle carried the presence of God. The tabernacle in the desert represented the presence of God. But the cloud represented the glory of God. And although you feel here the presence of God. But what is leading you. What is leading this church. What is bringing this church to the next glory. Is the glory of God. I don't know who I'm talking to. You're experiencing the presence of God with the tabernacle. In the desert. In time of worship, in time of praise, in time of study. But it's the glory of God that is leading you. How can we experience this glory of God? Having a life of prayer. Communicate with God. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 says pray without ceasing. Having a life of prayer communication with God these people in the desert had communication with God and I want to encourage you that even in your time of desert for whatever that time is experience God in a relationship by prayer a man that prays a woman that prays a church that prays is the church that is in victory we have our church for 52 days on a project called the Nehemiah project we have a conference call every morning at 5 a.m. for 52 days. We pray together. And we give her many people opportunities to bring a reflection. Give them a scripture. We leave that day encouraged. Time of prayer. Gathering in prayer. How many think that prayer is important? How many believe that prayer and relationship and prayer... It's probably one of the most important things that a man or woman of God should have, a church should have. And it's one of the least attended services. Because people don't believe in prayer. Talk about it. We do it when we're in need. We, we pray when we're in the desert, but we forget God. God doesn't want you to forget about him when he pours out his latter glory. For you to experience the latter glory in your desert time, you need to be in prayer. Number two, the reading of his word. 
Psalms 119 and 105, I love this scripture. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto to my path. Or a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. The pillar of light is God's word. The experience that you will have, the experience of God's glory will be in his word. Because it's God's word. It's inspired. It's, it's, it's God breathed. This life. It's like a two-edged sword. God's word is living. And it edifies. It cuts. It shapes. It forms. Right to the soul. You ever have someone speak to you over and over and over again? It's like it's not getting through. But you read the scripture. It tells you the same thing. And it penetrates. And it changes everything that you were thinking about. God's word is the only one that will give you peace. God's word is the only one that will instruct and train and prepare you. To live in the cloud. To live in God's glory. To experience and know what to do. When these things happen. The instruction of God's word. Fasting. Number three, fasting. Taking some time to abstain yourself, abstain yourself, abstinence, remove yourself from the food and maybe Facebook or maybe Instagram or or, or maybe, you know, TikTok, whatever it is that that is hindering you from experience the glory of God that is holding you back in, in the Egyptian experience of slavery. I don't know what that is. I don't know what is enslaving you, church. I don't know what's holding you back. I don't know if it's old thoughts. I don't know if it's a lack of forgiveness. I don't know what it might be, but I got to tell you, there's some things that you have to abstain and say, Lord, I prefer to be in your cloud than to be in my way. I always say it's better to be in God's will than in God's way. When you're in God's cloud, you're in God's way. I mean, God's will. Pharaoh was in God's way. Because he had the will for his people to be set free. You already know what God did with Pharaoh. They did not experience the cloud of glory in Egypt. But they did experience it in the desert. I said that before, but I just wanted to reiterate that. Because sometimes we feel because we're going through a difficult time and and everything is against us, that God is not with us. Can I get an amen? If we're honest with one another, sometimes you feel like God is not with you. But I want to remind you of a promise that God gave his people. He told this to Moses, he told this to Joshua, he told this to these great men that I would never leave you and I would never forsake you. talked about his word being bound on their hearts and their minds around their necks, you know, reminding them that he is the Lord God and he has the power to change everything. As a matter of fact, nothing moves without God allowing it. Praise the Lord. Fasting, abstaining, the experience of the cloud of glory, right? But it didn't. It, but they they had the greatest experience in the desert. Um, we can experience salvation without. We cannot experience the salvation. We cannot experience this freedom of Egypt. We cannot experience this if we don't confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior. I see a cloud. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Number four need to pay attention to the signs some people get hit and attacked by storms because they don't pay attention to the signs first kings 18 43 and 44 praise the Lord There was an experience. I'm almost done. Almost done. Hallelujah. 
How many know that the cloud is leading you? Then he said to his servant, Elijah. Then he said to his servant, go up and look forward toward the sea. So he went up, looked and said, there's, there's nothing. Seven times. Elijah said, go back. Seven times. On the seventh time, he reported, there's a cloud as small as a man's hand coming from the sea. Then Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, get your chariot ready and go down so the rain doesn't stop you. <laughs> there's a cloud coming your way. 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 And this is not a cloud to destroy you. This is the cloud of the rain, of the blessing, of the outpouring of the Spirit, of the former and the latter rain in one month. It's the, the, the rain, the cloud that blesses, the cloud that brings abundance, the cloud that brings the latter glory to this house. Don't give up. Imagine if I called you up here seven times. Hey, oh, it's over there. It's not there. Go back. It's not there. Some people give up and they quit. And the upper room, ex oh my God. And the upper room experience is started with 500. But only 120 received the blessing. Because they were not patient. And they didn't trust what God and what Jesus had told them was going to happen. Many people don't experience the, 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 the Shekinah glory of God because they're impatient. They think everything is the internet, but I'm just telling you. Look for it. And wait for it. Because it's coming. Look for it. Wait for it. Because the cloud... Of the former and latter rain is coming. Oh man, I don't know who I'm talking to. He says that it looked like a small hand. <laughs> Joel 2, Joel 2, Prophet Joel 2, 23 to 25. Says, Don't be afraid, wild animals for the wilderness. Pastures have turned green, the trees bear their fruit. And the fig tree and grapevine yield their riches. Children of Zion, Prince of Peace English Ministry, rejoice and be glad in the Lord your God because he gives you the autumn rain for your uh, vindication. He sends showers for you with autumn and spring rain as before. The threshing floors will be full of grain and the vast will overflow the vast will, over, vast will overflow with new wine and olive oil i will repay you for the alexandria this is why you were sharing I will repay you for the years that the swarming locusts ate, the young locusts, the destroying locusts, and the devouring locusts, my great army that I send against you. There's an outpouring of God's glory. And I finish with this. The cloud of glory goes with you, but the former rain and the latter rain is coming to this house. Everything that you lost, everything that you lost, Man, I wish Pastor Robles was here. Everything that you lost. Everything that the enemy came to attack and steal and destroy. Everything that he tried to hold back from this house. In the desert, you will receive it in the abundance. In the new land that I am taking you to, says the Lord.
And I finish with this Haggai 2 and 9 says, The final glory of this house will be greater than the first, says the Lord of hosts. I will provide peace in this place, the declaration of the Lord of hosts. I will provide prince of peace with peace. Because there's a cloud. Can you stand to your feet for a minute? I'm closing. You just need to believe that God does not want you in the desert any longer. You need to believe that God has taken you out of slavery. Don't think about the past. Don't think about what you left behind. Don't think about what might have been lost. Because the blessing that's coming is so much greater. The flock that's coming, it's so much greater. And God is preparing a remnant. Listen, for next week, if you believe this word, invite a friend. Don't come alone. Say, look, something great is happening in our house. If you're sick today, I want to pray for healing over you. If you feel like you're still in that desert, or you're still in, in Egypt in slavery. I want to pray that the Lord will set you free. Right where you're at. Amen. Sister, I want to share a testimony with you. There was a woman at my church. Her name was Maria Luisa. She was a big woman. The sweetest thing that I knew. She came from Jersey to Brooklyn, her and her husband. My husband was a truck driver. He had problems with cataracts. He could only drive a certain amount. Then he had to, when, the, when it started getting dark, he had to be home because he couldn't drive at night. And one day I remember that under the same anointing that I, I was ministering, the same anointing, I remember uh, saying the Lord was going to fill her in the name of Jesus. And Maria Luisa started jumping. She came in on one of those and she left glory of God that when I would speak to her to, to say to greet her or to say goodbye she, she was speaking in angelic tongue she wasn't even speaking to me in normal average language and it was amazing what God did but he had and her husband was behind her because she started dancing I don't know what your name is sister Willie she started dancing in God's presence. I was like, wow. She, she was overjoyed with God's glory. It's like the, the cloud had covered over her and she was rejoicing and she was so excited uh, about the presence of God that was filling her and enjoying her. But her husband was a little cautious and then he stands behind her and she falls on her husband. Her husband was a thinner man. And I was like, oh my God, I hope Brother Steve is okay. Oh, Brother Steve was okay. Two days later, he calls me and said, Pastor, something supernatural happened. Oh, Rama Sakata. Can you believe it? When I went to hold Maria Luisa, she fell on me. I said, No, I know. Are you okay? He goes, No, no, Pastor, you don't understand. My cataracts, my cataracts were healed as she fell on me. The anointing that fell on me healed me. And I was delivered. Now I could drive at night. I don't have issues with driving at night. The doctor's like, I don't know what happened, but your eyes, your eyesight, it, it's been cleared. Hallelujah. It's because there is a cloud of glory. Hallelujah. And I see it coming to this house. Hallelujah. God wants to transform, change, remove, and build. The 
listen slavery has no authority or power over you any longer poverty and sickness has no power over you any longer because the cloud is drawing near Willie the crowd is drawing near my sister I don't know what you're going through in your family but God says uh, that my cloud uh, is drawing it's coming and it will come with the former and the latter rain right there where you're at just lift your hands say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for the cloud thank you for the anointing thank you for the power thank you Lord for what you're about to do thank you for the miracle thank you for removing me from the, from the desert but even in the desert God is glorified praise you Lord Jesus Father God I ask you that you would lead this house by day and by night and they will experience like the prophet Joel said in the latter days I will pour out my spirit listen church you haven't seen nothing yet you have seen nothing yet you have seen nothing yet walk in the clouds says the Lord walk in my presence experience my glory in Jesus name I pray thank you Lord amen and amen God bless you God keep you sister Alexander with us I think we need a moment to breathe it in and just exhale maybe it didn't make sense to you our church is the history just believe it I believe it and I believe it that God is going to be working. I'm not going to add anything else. We're going to leave it. Period. God said and it will be done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm very happy that each one of you are here today. I want to welcome if you came late. I want to welcome and also dismiss to Prince of Peace Church English Ministry. Prince of Peace Church. I'm sorry. I always mix it up. Prince of Peace Church English Ministry. Welcome. Very happy you're here. I hope to see you next Sunday. As Brother Abraham said, bring a friend. I already have my friend. Her name is Catherine. I want her to pray for her. I've been praying for her for weeks. <laughs> and I'm like, Lord, I must take her to church. And I want you to say your friend's name right now. Say it out loud. I want to hear it. Yes, yeah, someone else. Okay, you guys are not loud. <laughs> God will provide. God will provide. My friend's name is Catherine. I hope I could bring her next week. I've been praying for her. And I hope you could bring your friend. And I'm excited for what God is going to do. And with this, we're going to dismiss in faith. And I hope I didn't forget anything. Pastor, I'm sorry if I did. Pastor will be with us next week and he will remind me. It's all right. And we're going to pray to dismiss. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus for this amazing word and for the perfect timing that you're bringing it in Lord because your timing is perfect Father God see I would have wanted a long time ago but you did it when you wanted to and when you please because you are God so thank you Father God thank you for each brother and sister that are here today and thank you for the way that you are going to manifest and are manifesting in our midst thank you for the healings that you're going to do in this church and that you already do it Lord Thank you, Father God, for the lives and for those souls that you are going to save, Father God. And that you are already bringing, Father God. Thank you for the gifts that you're giving us. That we're going to be able to give to others, Lord. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. And thank you because you are soon coming again. You're coming in soon. As my pastor says, and it's his in your word, Maranatha. Thank 
you for my brothers. Please take care of them as they go home. Help them in their week. Give us grace with our friends. Give us words that we may convince them to come to your temple. Give us boldness that we may speak bold to them and bring them, Lord, for your glory, Lord, not for our glory, for your glory, Father God. Help each one of the persons that is here throughout their struggles and situations in the week, throughout their faith, Father God. Help us, Father God. Thank you for another Sunday. And I was glad to be in the house of the Lord. With this, Father God, I leave, we leave in thankfulness.